Welcome. This video is going to take a look at chemical formulas and how the mole relates to that. So Freon has a chemical formula of CCl2F2. And as I think you probably know, this means one molecule of Freon has one carbon atom, two chlorine atoms, and two fluorine atoms. And in fact, you could probably draw the structure, a Lewis structure for this, showing carbon in the middle with the two chlorines, the two fluorines all bonded together with its tetrahedral shape, and you could find out if the molecule is polar or not. But if we think about that a little further, if you had a dozen molecules of Freon, now how many um, atoms, say, not molecules, let me just change that, how many atoms of each element would you have? Well, if one molecule had one carbon atom, then a dozen molecules, or 12, should have 12 carbon atoms, and it should have two dozen, or 24, chlorine atoms, and also two dozen, or 24, fluorine atoms. That was dimensional analysis, because I knew that one molecule was equal to one carbon atom, so then 12 molecules, I could set up a, a, a equation here. I'm going to make some room for this. So 12 molecules of Freon, CCl2F2, contains, if I'm trying to find carbon, I know that there is one carbon atom in one molecule. So that means I would have 12 carbon atoms in 12 molecules. And then when I subbed in chlorine here, now it becomes two chlorine atoms per molecule or two fluorine atoms per molecule. So then the question is, what would one mole of Freon contain? Well, I could change my mole into particles, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, or I could just think of terms of one mole. One mole of Freon would have one mole of carbon atoms, it would have two moles of chlorine atoms, and it would have two moles of freon atoms. And most often, instead of thinking of how many individual atoms there are, we usually think big. We think in terms of how many moles. So one freon molecule has five atoms in it, and one mole of freon has five moles of atoms in it. So if you had 5.5 .5 moles of freon, how many moles of fluorine would there be? Well, going back to my dimensional analysis, 5.5 .5 moles of CCl2F2, I want to know what I want is moles of fluorine. I have moles of freon. So I want to change what kind of moles I have. So I put the moles I want over the moles I have and I know that there are two moles of fluorine in every one mole of freon, so this would be 11 moles of fluorine. So here's one for you to try. How many moles of aluminum ion should there be in 1.25 moles of aluminum oxide? So go ahead and pause and try this. So I have 1.25 moles of Al2O3, but I want to know moles of just aluminum ions out of this total of Al2O3. So when I look at the equation or when I look at the formula, I see there's two moles of aluminum ion in every mole of aluminum oxide. So this would be 2.50 moles of aluminum ion. How many moles of chlorine ions should be in 2.5 moles of zinc chloride? So feel free to pause and try this. So what I have is 2.5 moles of zinc chloride. I want moles of chlorine. I have moles of zinc chloride. And according to my formula, there's two chlorine ions in every mole of zinc chloride. So this would be, technically you should write 5.00, hang on to your sig figs, or five moles of chlorine ions. 
Now one more here for you. Oftentimes uh, you'll be asked to come up with the formulas, so this time it's a little more difficult. Determine the moles of sulfate ions in 3 moles of iron 3 sulfate. So first of all I need to know what the equation is. So iron 3 has got a plus 3 charge, it's got 3 electrons to give away. Sulfate I look up, find it's SO4 with a minus 2 charge. So the correct chemical formula for this is Fe2 parentheses SO4 3. So I have 3 moles of Fe2 parentheses SO4 parentheses 3. And I want to know how many moles of SO4 are in that sample. So I set up my, uh, my ratio like this, and it would be 3 moles of sulfate in 1 mole of the compound. So this would be 9 or 9.00 moles of sulfate ions. The other thing we need to talk about with compounds and moles is you can also come up with what's known as the molar mass of a compound. And the molar mass of a compound is the mass of one mole of that particular compound. So you need to add up the atomic masses of each atom in it times the total of how many of those atoms are in it. So to find molar mass, you need to know what elements are in the compound, you need to know how many of each element is in the compound, and you need to know the atomic mass of each element. And the nice thing is you can find all this information with the chemical formula, which you should be good at writing by now, whether it's covalent or ionic, and your handy-dandy periodic table. So let's take a look at what would be the molar mass of Freon. Well, I know I have one carbon atom. If I look at my periodic table, I see that one carbon atom weighs 12.011 grams per mole. And really, to be more accurate here, instead of saying I have one carbon atom, I should say I have one mole of carbon in a mole of this, so I'm trying to find the molar mass. So that would be my mass of carbon is 12.011 grams. I have two moles of chlorine, and I see that chlorine is 35.45 grams per mole. So I have 70.9 grams of chlorine as part of the total. And then I have two moles of fluorine, and if I take a look, fluorine has a mass of 18.998, or a lot of charts around it, to 19.00 grams per mole. So this is 38 grams. But I don't have my molar mass until I go ahead and add these all together. So I don't know how much, I don't want to know how much just the individual pieces weigh. I want to know how much does a whole thing weigh. And so if I add these up, 12.011 plus 70.9 plus 38. I'm coming up with a mass of, I came up with 120.911 grams per mole, or if I round to my four sig figs, which two of my masses were, that would be 120.9 grams per mole. And when you say molar mass, we know you're talking about the grams in one mole, but often we label it grams per mole just to remind us it's the molar mass, just not just the mass of the sample we happen to be working with. So go ahead and try, see if you can find the molar mass of these compounds. And I would encourage you to pause and try this, and I'll start working my solutions. So I have two carbon at 12.011 each. Plus, I actually have six hydrogen at 1.01 .01 each, plus one oxygen at 16. And I'm going to wait till the end to put my labels on, and I'm guessing most of you will too. But I've got two times 12.011 plus six times 1.01 .01 plus the one times 16. I'm getting a total of 46.082. I can round to 46.1 since hydrogen only had three sig figs, and I would call this grams, or I'd label it grams per mole. Calcium chloride and strontium nitrate, you're going to have to figure out the formula for them. They're both ionic compounds. 
Calcium picks up a plus 2 charge, chlorine a minus 1. So that means my formula would be CaCl2. So 1 calcium times a atomic mass of 40.08 plus 2 chlorine with an atomic mass of 35.45 is going to give me a molar mass of 110.98 grams per mole, or if you notice I only had four sig figs so I could round this to 111.0 grams per mole. Strontium nitrate, strontium has a plus two, nitrate's NO3 with only a minus one, so this is SR NO32, so I have one strontium with a weight of 87.62, atomic mass of 87.62, I have two nitrogen with a mass of 14.01 and I have six oxygen each with a mass of 16. So my molar mass for strontium nitrate 1 times the 87.62 plus 2 times 14.01 plus 6 times 16 I'm coming up with a molar mass of 211.64 grams per mole. So the second triad asks what's the mass of 2.5 moles of C2H5OH? Well to do these, and these are going to be common problems for you, it's just assume that you know that you'll need the molar mass of C2H5OH. And remember on the previous uh, slide we said there was two copper or two carbon at 12.011 there were six hydrogen at 1.01, .01, and there was one oxygen at 16. And I don't happen to remember what that was. 24, it looks like it was probably 46.02, perhaps. 46.08. Or I believe we rounded to 46.1 grams per mole. And now I have, I've been given 2.50 moles and I'm being asked to come up with grams. So again, I follow the same process for my dimensional analysis. What my molar mass is telling me is one mole weighs 46.1 grams. I want grams, so that goes on the top. I have moles, that goes on the bottom. So I put the 46.1 on top, the one mole on the bottom. I take my 46.1 times 2.5, and I get 115.25, or I could round to just 115 for the three sig figs, 115 grams. So here, try and go the other direction with this. How many moles are in 511 grams of strontium nitrate? So again, pause this and see what you can do on your own. So the first thing I need is my molar mass for strontium nitrate, and we did do this a couple slides ago, but just to remind you, there's one strontium at 87.62, two nitrate weighing 14.01 grams each, and six oxygen weighing 16. So the molar mass for strontium is 211.64 grams in every one mole. So I have 511 grams, which is more than 211, so I have more than a mole, and I want to know how many moles that would be. So what I want is moles, what I have is grams, and what I know about strontium nitrate is one mole weighs 211.64 grams. So I can take my 511, divide by 211.64, and that should be 2.41 moles of strontium nitrate.